Mayfield, can they do it again? Yes, they can! And the catch is made by Taj Washington, touchdown, USC! Blocked by Embiid! Timmy, yes! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Beef Upfront podcast. This is your host, Ryan Coyle, back today with a new episode as part of a new series that we're starting. We are 50 days out from week zero in the college football season. The main game that weekend is Notre Dame Navy. I believe it's Saturday, August 26th. So by the time this episode is dropping, we'll be 50 days out from that. So we're starting our college football preview series, going to be hitting on the major teams across the country over these next 50 days try and get 20 to 25 of the major teams kind of previewed and, and give you guys a pretty good idea of what to expect from these teams going into the year, what their offense is going to look like, what their defense is going to look like, and if we could potentially see them in the college football playoffs. So with today's first episode, we're going to go to a team out east uh, a little bit with the Ohio State Buckeyes right off of Pennsylvania. Um, this is going to be the Ohio State football 2023 preview Brought to you by Beef Up Front. Their head coach coming back since 2019, Ryan Day. He's a pretty crazy 45 and 6 over his tenure. And there have been a little bit of uh, murmurs and kind of upsetness, I guess you could say, from the Ohio State fans that he he can't get over the hump potentially. He, does, he doesn't have that elusive national title that Urban Meyer is able to get, and he's 45 and 6. So it goes to show you how high the standard is here at Ohio State and how crazy the fans are. Their 2022 season, they went 11 and two overall. Lost to Michigan in the regular season finale, which they got their ass kicked. And then they earned the number four seed in the college football playoff. Arguably outplayed Georgia and wound up missing a 50 yard field goal as time expired, and eventually lost 42 to 41. That was a game where C.J. Stroud just put on an absolute clinic against the best defense in the country in Georgia, and they were dominating the game until Marvin Harrison was knocked out. I believe he had three first-half touchdowns in that one, and he got knocked out with a concussion, and then the the tide of the game kind of flipped, and Georgia was able to come back and win with some Stetson Bennett-led heroics. But this Ohio State team, that will probably, when the preseason polls come out, be right up there in the top five rankings and be expected to compete for a spot in the college football playoff again, and I think anything less – then a college football playoff berth, I'm not saying Ryan Day's seat is hot, but you'll hear it from the fans that you know this team is one of the best offenses or at least has some of the best playmakers in the country. They should be competing to go to the national championship, uh, which he hasn't been able to do yet. So uh, last year, their, their key victories on their team included the opening game versus Notre Dame, as well as Penn State. Other than that, a pretty modest schedule they kind of rolled through for most of the year, as I said It also included losses to Michigan in the last game of the season for the second game in a row now. And then in the playoff to Georgia in one of the better college football playoff games we've ever seen. When you look at the roster turnover from last year, they had had quite a few key losses, but this Ohio State, one of the best recruiting teams in the country, expect them to just reload and and roll over. A lot of guys that have been in the woodworks and and really just been developing over these past few years, they also returned some stars as well. But key losses include three first-round picks to the NFL draft, number two overall pick, C.J. Stroud, their quarterback. They'll, They'll be starting a new quarterback this year. We'll get into that soon. Number six overall pick, offensive tackle Paris Johnson, and then wide receiver Jackson Smith and Jigba to the Seahawks. Three first-round picks there. They had lost an edge rusher and two other starters on the offensive line as well to the NFL draft. So some pretty significant losses, but like I said, they have plenty of talent to roll over and continue into this year. When you look at the offensive side of the ball, as I touched on, they lost C.J. Stroud, the quarterback. He went number two overall to the Texans. That's a major loss, obviously. You're going to have some big turnover, a new guy under center starting a majority of the games for them for the first time in his career and on a big stage with a bunch of very, very talented weapons around him. CJ Stroud there last year threw for 3,688 yards and 41 touchdowns. So whoever does step into that quarterback spot has some big shoes to fill. And those two quarterbacks that are, look like they'll be competing for the starting job are Kyle McCord, who will be a junior or Devin Brown, who is a red or a red shirt freshman. They both battled it out in spring ball, but Brown did injure his finger towards the end. I believe I already missed the last four practices as well as the spring game. So that kind of gave McCord a leg up on the competition, allowed him to go out and play in the spring game. Didn't really light the world on fire, but 
he's been in the system now for th- going into his third year. I think they're going to kind of value that experience going forward. He's also a St. Joe's prep product out of Philadelphia where Marvin Harrison Jr. went. So he was Marvin Harrison's high school quarterback. I think that chemistry and that relationship might also give him another leg up or at least like the first crack at it. Give him the first game or two of the season. And if he's not cutting it, then turn to see what Devin Brown can do. But either of these guys are five stars. They should be fine either way, whoever's starting. But McCord does have some more experience on his hand. Brown doesn't really have any college experience yet. Uh, back in 2021, McCord started versus Akron in a pretty pretty big ass kick in that game, but he went 13 of 18 for 319 yards with two touchdowns and an interception in that victory. So a guy that does have some experience, and he's gotten in in some other games that have been blowouts over the past few years as well. But I think he's ready to step up into the limelight and be the guy there for Ohio State under center. But Devin Brown, who also is number 33, it's kind of just an interesting note for a quarterback, he's in the mix there as well. Then when you turn your attention to the running backs, you have kind of the more elusive, slippery, make you miss guy in Travion Henderson, and then the bruising downhill type running back in Mayan Williamson. Excuse me, Mayan Williams. Um, that duo combined for thirteen hundred ninety six yards last year and twenty one touchdowns on the ground. I do think Henderson could be a dark horse Heisman candidate. I say this because, as I was talking about, with a new quarterback getting ushered in. I feel like at the beginning of the season, they're going to lean on the run and try and establish that at the beginning of the year and just make their quarterback as comfortable as can be. This also is an offensive line that is going to have three new starters in the fold. It is easier if you ask linemen to run block than to pass block. So I think at the beginning of the year, we could see them lean on the run. And we also saw in that game against Michigan that they really got bullied and handled up front. I think this whole offseason – the, the team's mantra was just really let's get tougher, let's let's build a more of a, a solid identity and, and just that that grit and grind type style up front. And I think that's really been preached throughout this offseason. Don't get pushed around again or or Michigan's gonna continue to beat us. And as we know, that's probably the biggest rivalry in college football. So look out for Henderson to be a dark horse Heisman candidate for a guy that potentially could win it that's not a quarterback. Like Drake May out of UNC and Caleb Williams out of USC are the top two guys right now, but I wouldn't be surprised if McCord steps in as well, like the quarterback with all the wide receivers that we'll touch on in a second. He has a Heisman-type season, but look for Henderson. I mean, in 2021, he ran for 1,248 yards and 15 touchdowns as a freshman, was banged up last year, was limited to about like 750 yards, missed some games, but had a really, really good freshman year. I think he could be in for an explosive junior year on the table. Um and as I was saying, inex- inexperienced quarterback looking to build more of a, a tough, gritty um, mentality mindset out there. I think that they could really rely on the run early in the season. And then you look at their pass catchers, the receiving group. This is the best group in the nation. I, I think everyone would agree with that. Headlined by Marvin Harrison Jr., who will most likely be the, the first non-quarterback off the board in the draft next season. Definitely the number one receiver. You look at a guy like Brock Bowers, tight end of Georgia. He's very highly regarded. Caleb Williams, Drake May are up there for the quarterbacks, but Marvin Harrison definitely could be a top five pick. I saw someone on Twitter the other day, like a scout gave him like a hundred grade, like the perfect prospect, nothing wrong with him. So uh, a a very, very promising group of receivers headlined by him. Um, And then he's got his running mate back in Emeka Ibuka. He's another likely first rounder next year's draft. Those two last year combined for 24 touchdowns and each had over 1100 yards. So very solid group of receivers for your one, two punch. And then, you throw in your, your third overall receiver, and that's just the former number one overall recruit in the country uh, back a few years ago in Julian Fleming, a, a very solid number three option. So whether it's McCord or Brown stepping in into the starting spot of quarterback, they are more than set up to have success on the outside. Those guys just have to take care of the football, be smart with the ball, and get it into these playmakers' hands because, as we know with the Ohio State scheme, they're going to get open. Just put it where, where they need it and just be that point guard type of player out in the court that or out on the field, excuse me, that we saw C.J. Stroud kind of be over the past two years. Offensive line is a little bit worrisome for me. As I was talking about, lost three starters from last year, including both of their tackles, Paris Johnson and Dewan Jones, I believe, was the other tackle. And then they lost an interior lineman as well. Paris Johnson, though, the number six overall pick in this past year's NFL draft, so a standout left tackle. That is an area of concern with me, especially with a new quarterback. Another reason why I think they could just rely on the run early in the season as they get the quarterback up to speed and the offensive line gets more continuity and better together as a group of pass blockers. 
Now we flip our attention to the defense, which has kind of been the Achilles heel of this program over the past few years. I think the main reason they haven't been able to get over that top. They should take a, a jump, though, in the second year under Jim Knowles. He was the former defensive coordinator at Oklahoma State. He was like a big money pickup by Ohio State to lure him away from there. And they only lost one starter last year in the NFL draft. But the defense did not show up in their biggest games of the year last year against Michigan and Georgia. And really, that's where you need to show up the most in college football and just really in football in general. Even you look at the Super Bowl this past year, it was an offensive shootout between the Eagles and the Chiefs. And the Eagles coming in had the much better defense. They didn't show up in, in the big game and the Chiefs went on to win. You look at Ohio State, they're going to put up points regardless, whether it's Brown or McCord playing quarterback either one of them will eventually get settled in and really thrive with these playmakers but they need to just be able to get this defense one to two stops a game I mean they allowed an average of 43 and a half points per game in those two games last season to Michigan and Georgia the major improvement I think they need is, is up front especially in the running game the development from their guys there this offseason if they picked up any key guys in the portal as well they just got gashed on the run and pushed around up front at the point of attack I think that's something that as I was saying earlier They've emphasized this entire offseason, just being able to dominate up front and get that beef up front mentality out there on the on the uh, point of attack at the line of scrimmage. So look for the defensive line, I think, to be the key to this team, whether they can get after the passer. We've seen them have a slew of good pass rushers over the years. Chase Young, Nick Boza, Joey Bosa. Can they have a stud guy step it up this year? It doesn't look like it at the moment, but that's something to keep an eye out for as well. When you look at the back half of the defense, junior corner Denzel Burke is a guy that I've been reading and hear a lot about of being the potentially next NFL corner out of Ohio State. He could be a shutdown type guy in the Big Ten this year that has a pretty good amount of wide receivers to their name. So the bottom line is for this defense, the offense is going to score. The defense just in those big games needs to be able to step up cause a turnover, get a key sack, you know, turnover on downs, just get one or two stops a game and not also not allow teams like Michigan was to control the line of scrimmage up front, control the clock, just beat you down and then have that explosive play that really just opens up the game. Defense just needs to be able to get one to two key stops a game or, or make one of those game changing type plays. And that could get them to the national championship and, and hoisting the college football uh, playoff trophy up at, at this time next year. Um, entering the season next year as the reigning national champions with it, holding that trophy up in, in January, wherever the, the championship happens to be this year. Uh, when we look at their schedule preview, I'm going to give them one second while I share my screen. I, I think this is a team that with the lack of experience, a quarterback worries me a little bit. It, it could potentially take them a little bit to get going. But when you look at their schedule, Indiana, I'm going to give them a win there. Youngstown State and Western Kentucky, so 3-0 and to start off the bat. They traveled to Notre Dame. Notre Dame was a team that really improved last year over the second half of the season under Marcus Freeman. I think that's going to be a loss for Ohio State. I think that's their toughest test so far early in the season. They got the bye coming up, so are, are they looking forward to that potentially? Who knows? And that Notre Dame defense got really, really good over the course of the season, and they did give Ohio State troubles in, in the first game of the year as well. I believe that was a 21-10 Ohio State victory, the lowest scoring performance of them the entire season. So um, so you get 3-1. and one. I'm going to have them beat Maryland, beat Purdue, beat Penn State. Penn State is a team to watch out for this year with Drew Aller, a quarterback. They could be a breakout team. Uh beat Wisconsin, beat Rutgers, beat Michigan State, beat Minnesota, and I'm going to have Michigan beating them for the third straight year. So that'll give Ohio State 10-2. and two. I doubt that get, that probably won't get them into the Big Ten title game. Uh, who knows what it's going to happen with Michigan for the season, but most likely not going to the Big Ten title game. And then I don't think they'll be able to get into the playoff for the second straight year without winning their conference championship or at least competing in it. So I have Ohio State going 10-2 and two this year. Would not surprise me at all, though, to see them go 11-1, and one, potentially 12-0 and 0 with all this talent. Just the quarterback is a question right now. Two really talented five-star guys in Devin Brown and Kyle McCord, but we don't know what we're really getting from them besides a, a few glimpses of action against Akron from Kyle McCord. So still think it's going to be a good year for Ohio State. By the time the, the expanded playoff rolls around, this 10-2 and two record will get you in. But uh, I, I'm not expecting Ohio State to be a playoff team this year. I do think it's Michigan's conference to lose at this point. But at the same time, would not be surprised at all to see the Buckeyes find their way into the field of four. So thank you, everyone, for listening. As I said, we are 50 days out from college football. Really excited to get into it. I'm going to try and get 
20 to 25 of these episodes out covering the major teams across the sport. But as always, thank you for listening. Please like, subscribe, and we'll talk soon.